Hello, everybody. Uh, I was just in with the Lieutenant Governor, and uh, we had a wonderful conversation. She uh, has invited me to uh, form government, uh, which is obviously uh, exciting, and, uh, and I can't wait to get to work. Uh, I am uh, very grateful for the opportunity to meet with her, and I uh, look forward to any questions that you might have. So for the media on the line, uh, please press star one to enter the queue, and you'll be limited to one question and one follow-up. Please remember to take yourself off speaker before asking your question. And our first question will come from Rob Shaw, Czech News. Uh, do you have a date in which you expect to be sworn in that you talked to Lieutenant Governor about? Uh, we're working uh, right now on the details. Uh, my uh, goal and my hope is to be sworn in uh, before the end of the session so that I'm able to be in the legislature and uh, able to introduce some key pieces of legislation uh, for uh, my first 100 days in office. Uh, and uh, obviously when that, uh, that 100 days starts and I'm sworn in, uh, the work will begin. And uh, part of that is being accountable to the legislature and to British Columbians, and part is delivering on their priorities around housing and healthcare, public safety, and the environment. Do you have a follow-up? Sure. Uh, have you met with the mayors of Vancouver and Surrey yet? And if so, what did you talk about? And how does what they say fit into your priorities uh, as an incoming premier? Well, this, uh, it won't be a surprise to anybody uh, to know that uh, during my meetings with the mayor of Vancouver and the mayor of uh, Surrey uh, and Victoria, uh, the issues were uh, housing, uh, issues around uh, uh, public safety, homelessness and addiction, mental health issues in the streets, uh, and, uh, and uh, their interest in working with the province to address these issues. I think uh, there's such an opportunity for us to work together with these uh, municipal leaders. They're, uh, they're all new mayors. They're all excited and ready to go. Uh, and I'll be a new premier as well. And the provincial government uh, will be a good partner for them on these priorities. The next question will go to Binder Sajjan, CTV. Hi, I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit more about the key pieces of legislation that you're looking at specifically. I know you've laid out your 100 day plan, but what are you hoping to get done before the end of this session? Uh, well, my, uh, my key priorities are obviously around uh, the housing crisis, the fact that people can't find an affordable place to live, uh, even if they earn a decent income, uh, and uh, issues around public safety, uh, making sure that people are both safe uh, in, in the sense that when they look at their downtowns, they feel that that's a place that they would like to be with their families or if they're seniors, they feel comfortable being there. But also for the people who are living outside that are struggling with mental health and addiction, that their safety is part of our priority as well. Uh, and uh, we have so many other issues uh, to work on. Uh, my goal over the next few weeks will be to work through with our team what the world of the possible is uh, and, uh, and uh, to do my best to get in uh, to uh, the legislature before the end of the session in order to be able to deliver on these goals. Do you have a follow-up? Yeah, I'm just wondering, uh, can you, you know, tell us a bit about how the conversation went? Obviously, she asked you if you would like to form government. I'm, you said yes, I'm guessing. So you could just talk a little bit more about how that conversation went. Absolutely. The uh, uh, Lieutenant Governor uh, uh, asked me whether I uh, uh, believe that I had the confidence of, uh, of the House, and, uh, and I said that I did. And uh, she said that uh, she was inviting me to form government. Uh, I said I was very uh, honored uh, that she would ask me. And the answer was certainly yes. Uh, she's a wonderful host, and so we uh, uh, discussed uh, some of uh, uh, her background in, in, uh, as a professional and, uh, and some of mine and my time before government uh, conversation. And we had some very small pastries that were quite delicious uh, and, uh, and some tea, so it felt, uh, it felt appropriate. The next question is from Katie DeRosa, Vancouver Sun. Uh, Premier Designate, it, after you're sworn in, will you commit to the rest of the legislative's fall session if there's a certain number of weeks remaining, or do you think you'll recess until the, um, the, the winter or spring session when you present the budget? Uh, this is obviously a really unusual uh, transition uh, process that's taking place. Usually a government would adjourn uh, for uh, adjourn a legislative session for transition to take place. Uh, that's not what we've done. We have the session happening right now while transition is also happening. Uh, so my goal uh, and my hope uh, is to be uh, uh, sworn in as premier and be able to sit in the legislature during this session to be accountable in that way. Uh, but also uh, I'm hopeful to be able to deliver on some key uh, priority areas even in the short time that remains in the session. Do you have a follow-up? 
do you expect to uh, appoint cabinet ministers on the same day that you're sworn in, or when would a possible cabinet shuffle take place? Uh, right now, I'm getting uh, briefings from uh, the public service on key issues uh, facing British Columbia, uh, the state of the economy, and, uh, and obviously the global situation and, and the impacts it's having on British Columbia, uh, and, uh, and a whole array of, uh, of different issues facing uh, different ministries, and in particular, uh, how they're going to impact British Columbians and, uh, and what our government responses are and, and will be. So there's a lot going on right now. Uh, the, uh, uh, I'm looking forward to uh, having the opportunity to sit down with my colleagues, meet with them individually, talk about their priorities, not just for their communities, but the files that they have that they've been given by Premier Horgan, uh, and to take an assessment of where our government is at and where we're going. Uh, and, uh, and it's not until that process is complete that I'll have anything to say about any uh, uh, cabinet roles or anything related to that. The next question is from Keith Baldry, Global. Speaking of cabinet, uh, the Liberal opposition several times now has used an entire question period to demand that John Horgan replace Adrian Dix as health minister, which has been rebuffed or ignored. Are you going to continue to have that position of keeping Mr. Dix as health minister? Well, I think all uh, British Columbians are aware of the strain that our health care system is under coming out of the pandemic. Uh, and as well, that this isn't an issue that's unique to British Columbia. This is an issue faced by uh, governments across Canada. There have been efforts to engage the federal government on their support for our public health care system. Uh, issue, uh, an initiative led, actually, by Premier Horgan, and I'm very proud of his work on that for British Columbia with the Council of Federation. At the end of the day, for British Columbians, it's about uh, are they going to have access to a family doctor in order to be able to get the care that their family needs? If they are in medical crisis, uh, will there be an ambulance? Uh, will the, uh, the hospital be able to provide them the care they deserve? And uh, that is one of my key priority areas. Uh, it's one that I uh, look forward to uh, uh, accelerating our work and finding ways to respond to the needs of uh, those frontline healthcare workers that provide those services we all depend on. And I just want to take a moment and say how proud I am of the work of Minister Dix throughout the pandemic. Uh, uh, really significant work. Uh, and I look forward to working with him and with all of my colleagues to address this issue. Do you have a follow-up? Yeah, just back to the le legislation you're talking about. It, it takes time to draft legislation, uh, it, particularly if it's fairly complex. Has work already begun on this uh, in terms of drafting legislation that you want to see in, in front of the House? And if so, when did that start? Uh, so uh, that's, a, that's a really good question, Keith. Uh, <laughs> uh, people will know that, uh, that uh, certainly my priority areas, the issues of housing and health care and public safety, um, are, uh, are issues that we need to address in a really uh, aggressive and urgent way. Uh, and that's why I'm, uh, I'm trying to work with our team to accelerate and have in place uh, key legislative initiatives to respond to that. It, it's a moving target. You know, we're in session right now, uh, and, uh, and I'm working with our team to, to try to be in a position to be able to do that. I'm talking about, about my hopes and aspirations here for the, for the remainder of a, of a quickly moving session while we're doing transition. Uh, and, uh, and my goal here is to hit the ground running. That's all we have time for today. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you.